listening to, you are absolutely listening to the George Espinlove Show coming to you live from the Funny Farm. Now with no further ado, here comes Georgie! very very much it is it is friday night at the funny farm and we have a doozy of a show tonight rob oliver is going to be with us neil haley our friend out of pittsburgh is going to be with us he's going to be co-hosting with me and later on we're going to have my mom on the show because today was her last day at work and she is officially retiring and now she can spend all her time with me and take care of me right to all of our friends down the street around the corner across this great nation and around the world we welcome you to the george espinlove show and as you know we come to you live each and every evening monday through friday from the funny farm in a place called our world we have no specific mailing address we don't even have a mailbox, but we do have email, George C.E. That's George C.E. at Comcast.net. Thank you for your emails. Thank you in advance for the emails that you'll be sending, and we'll get back to you just as quick as we can. Now, if I push the right buttons, which you know me with buttons, I'm going to bring these fellows on right about now. So let's see if this will work. Rob, are you there? I'm here. Neil, are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right. Neil, I was I was telling Rob, since both of you fellows are from Pittsburgh, I thought that it would be good to kind of get you guys hooked up together here. And I, and I was telling Rob that you are the total tutor and you are a radio personality with uh, how many stations are you on now? hundred plus right now. So we keep growing. We're doing good. A hundred plus. And yeah. he went to the, uni- didn't you go to the University of Pittsburgh, Rob? Yes, I did. And you got your master's? I went to, I went, I went to Duquesne, yeah. So, yeah that's, 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 that's. And he got his, I, I, yeah, he got his master's from Duquesne, right, Rob? Correct. Yeah. So I figured I'd, I'd hook you guys up and we'd all be hooked with everybody. How's that? Fantastic. I appreciate that. All righty. And, Neil, I understand that you're riding down a long, lonesome highway. Yes, with a bunch of kids in the car. They're not listening. That- <laughs> so it's just, it's just, it is what it is today. So don't mind me. But I'm, I, I can multitask for sure. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> All righty. It, I was going to say you got that great family with you. And I remember, honest, I remember those days. Trust me. I, <laughs> I do, and I. Uh, you said that your kids aren't listening, then uh, they're a lot like mine. <laughs> <laughs> they're like everybody's kids. Yeah, thanks to just basically, uh, unless you choose to only have one, that's the only way to not listen. Kids, it's possible, forget it. It's craziness. Kids are kids, and that's when they're well, and that's what we like. Yes. Rob, would you do me a favor and and just give us a little background about yourself? Sure. Um, I am today. I I'm kind of an interesting story where uh, I use a wheelchair today, and that's a result of an injury that I had when I was 21 years old. Back then, I was kind of one of those athletic adrenaline junkies, and I was on vacation with my friends, and was body surfing on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And for anybody in the audience that doesn't know what body surfing is, it's surfing without a surfboard. And as I was riding the wave in towards the shore, instead of it carrying me forward, 
it pushed me down and I hit my head on the bottom. I felt a crunch. I heard a pop and I broke my neck. And so as a result of that, that was almost 20 years ago now. This August will be 20 years. And as a result of that, I can't walk and I have limited use of my arms and hands. So that's kind of the background as to where I got to where I am. But of course, since then, I've learned all kinds of invaluable lessons about what life is all about. Mm. When when this incident happened, and you you knew instantly that that something was definitely wrong. Did they have to come out and get you, or what happened? Yeah, um, I couldn't move at all. So I was rolling around under the waves, and my face cleared for a quick second. And when I didn't stand up, a friend of mine saw my face, and when I didn't stand up, he knew something was wrong, and he came in after me, saved my life, uh, pulled me out. I will say this, that I'm real thankful that it was in the early 90s when this happened. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I was wearing a bright purple swimsuit, and he couldn't find me. He did find that bright purple swimsuit, though, and that's literally what saved my life. Mm. Neil? Wow. I mean, the story is unbelievable. It reminds me of a professional rock climber who talked about how he became uh, paralyzed from an accident. Uh, He's a professional rock climber, and I heard about that story. How did she persevere through those issues? And I'm going to put. I'm going to put, every time I ask a question, I'm going to put it on mute. Okay, I, Neil, I'm having a little bit of trouble understanding your question. I said, "How did you persevere through that once that incident once it happened? How did you get? How did, were you able to overcome that?" Uh, there were a, two different experiences that I had that really kind of put everything in perspective for me. The first of which was, uh, right following the injury, it was really touch and go as to whether or not I was going to survive. And as I was in the hospital, they had me on a respirator that was breathing for me. When I came off that, I, the first conversation I had was with my girlfriend and she had been on the beach. She saw me injured. And what I wanted to talk to her about was our relationship. What's this going to be about? And I said to her, listen, I don't know what the future holds, but it looks like it holds a lot of limitations. And I said, if that's too much for you, if that's overwhelming for you, then it's okay with me if you walk away because I need you to be okay. I care about what's going on with you. I said, the second thing is, I don't know what you're feeling towards me, but if you're just feeling pity for me, if you're just feeling sorry for me, that's not the foundation for a relationship. And the last thing I said was, I don't know what kind of pressure you're feeling from other people that would say, you know, you can't leave me now because this is my hour of greatest need or however you want to say that. I said, those people are not a part of us and you need to do what's best for you and whatever that is, I'm okay with. And she got real mad and said, listen, uh, what I love about you has nothing to do with whether or not you can walk. I love you for who you are on the inside. And if you think you can get rid of me that easy, you've got another thing coming. So that really gave me the understanding of what is life all about? Life is not about uh, what you can do with your hands. Life is about who you are inside. It's about your personality. It's about your heart. It's about your character. And those are all things that I had. And that was what was important to her, and that was going to be what helped me to survive through life and what gave me value every day. And so having that kind of as the foundation is really the, the guide for me as to where I can get in life and what I can do in life. So that's kind of the one foundation, and I think that that's a powerful thing for everybody that sometimes we get so caught up in what we're doing in life that we forget that truly what's important is who we are. And that's what ultimately makes an impact on the people around us. The other story is that about two months into my rehab, I was transferred from an acute care hospital to a rehab hospital. And when I arrived there, my occupational therapist said to me, 
so what do you want to do? And I said to her, like, what do you mean, what do I want to do? You know what I'm capable of. You know how my injury is. You know what I'm uh, able to do. You tell me what I am capable of, and I'll, lis- uh, I'll listen to you, and I'll live up to those expectations. And she said, no, you tell me what you want to do, and I will work with you to accomplish those goals. You may not do it like you used to do it, and you may not do it like everybody else does it, but um, you can do it if you're willing to put in the time and energy, and if you're willing to be creative in how you accomplish things, then you're able to accomplish all of your goals uh, as long as uh, you, you have that kind of framework and that understanding about it. So with that background for it, it put me into a place where I'm understanding. Let's take a look at what is it that I want to do and then figure out the creative way to accomplish those goals and have the understanding that it's going to be different for me than it used to be and it's going to be different for me than it was for other people, but I'm still able to accomplish those things. Rob, <clears throat> excuse me. We, Ladies and gentlemen, go to Rob's website, and this is what it is. Your motivational speaker dot com. Your motivational speaker dot com. And like the old newspaper boy, the crier, you know, uh, read all about it. You can read all about Rob and your book, Rob, Still Walking. When did you write that and how long did it take you? Um, I wrote that uh, two years ago. And it took me about two years to get it done. And uh, I'm actually working on my second book at this point. Uh, the first book's called Still Walking. The second book is called Still Falling. And in, Still Walking is kind of looking at the overall limitations that I am dealing with. And the Still Falling is more designed to look at the daily uh, difficulties that I face um, and the daily difficulties that everybody faces. So, uh, But the Still Walking is the one that's available currently. Still Falling will be available later this summer. Um, and so, yeah, it was it was one of those things that I went through a lot of difficult experiences, and I was hoping that others could learn from what I've been through. Neil? Uh, basically, through your motivational speaking, I want to know, based on, I guess, going through the university that you go through, you really can be a comfort for others that are going through difficulties, even if they might not be as horrific as yeah, I think that the fact is everybody has problems, and having problems is part of the human condition. We all have limitations. I, I was speaking to some uh, school kids the other day. They brought me in to speak after everyone had taken their um, you know, standardized testing. And the question that I was asking them is, who took the test? Everybody put their hand up. I said, who got all the questions right? Now, nobody's got their hand up. So we, we all have limitations. We all have uh, you know, things that we're not as good at. But it's understanding what our strengths are and looking at what the things are that we do have and capitalizing on those and appreciating those that's going to help us to be successful and to appreciate and to be happy with our lives. How far do you travel, Rob? I have, I, I'm based in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. and I have traveled uh, all over the East Coast, anywhere from Florida up to uh, Boston and you know, Michigan, Ohio. I've had some inquiries from out in Iowa. That's, um, so I, pretty much anywhere that I can get to within a day of driving is, pretty, is where I go. How long was it from the time you went to the hospital until the time you actually ended up in rehab? Uh, I went, well, when I went into the hospital, in, I was actually down in Virginia. And uh, because I, my injury occurred on the Outer Banks of North Carolina, I'm not sure if I'd mentioned that. Uh, and they transferred me from there up to Philadelphia after about a week because that's where I was originally from. And so I was in an acute care hospital for the two months 
then transferred to a rehab hospital for four months, and it wasn't until six months after the injury that I was able to get home at all. Wow. That is just absolutely an amazing story, Rob. And I think that if people, our listeners out there, are all need help and motivation, especially when we're dealing with a very, very difficult economy, uh, jobs are just hard to come by. And when you do find the right job, it's not always what you're looking for. What advice would you offer people that are going through those difficulties, either searching for a job or trying to find their true calling, their true career? Really what it comes down to is looking at the things that we can do and looking at the things that we can change. We cannot change the economy. Uh, I feel bad for President Obama sometimes because he has tried all kinds of stuff to change the economy, and it doesn't look like uh, we've had a tremendous impact at this point. Uh, and if he can't change it, I know that I can't. So I'll let that go. But what I can do is look at at my interests, look at my strengths, look at my abilities, and see where I can put those into action. What is it that I can do with those? And sometimes it's going to be uh, in a small arena. Sometimes it's going to be in a bigger arena. But always be looking for what is it that I can do and where is it that I can make an impact. And so, you know, in times when you have folks that are looking for a job, and it's so difficult to find one. Um, it's a matter of finding, first of all, finding out what is it that I actually am skilled at? What is it that I have the passion for? And pursuing that. And then sometimes it's a matter of, okay, if I cannot do what it is that I'm passionate about, then what is it that I can find that's going to be able to, to pay the bill? Sometimes we need to uh, let our passions go for a little bit while we pay the bills until we can come back and truly pursue what it is that makes us happy and gives us fulfillment in life. Uh, sometimes we have to live practically. Rob, when, when all this happened, from the beginning, on, uh, let, let, let's say from the beginning until you finally got to go home, your life must have been an emotional roller coaster. What what's some of the emotions that you went through? There were a number of them. I mean, first of all, there was kind of a thankfulness just to be alive. Mm -hmm. Then there was some grief as far as I have lost tremendous abilities. Uh, and then there was the frustration of trying to accomplish things that were so easily accomplished before my injury that now were very difficult. And then there was the exhilaration of uh, being able to actually do those things and to um, you know, be able to accomplish things independently as I needed to. And there was the hopefulness of recovery that uh, never actually came to fruition of I was you know, hopeful that I would be able to uh, walk again, even though uh, they told me that wasn't likely, but I had read a book. I don't know if you guys remember the story. There was a guy named Dennis Bird who played for the Jets, and he was injured on the field of play. Yes. And when that happened, he wrote, uh, they told him that he's never going to walk again, mm -hmm. and he determined that he was going to walk out of rehab. And he did. And he wrote a book, I think, called um, rise, rise and Walk or something along those lines. And I read that book and was very impressed with it and thought, okay, it was about faith and dedication and hard work and all these things. And I thought, well, boy, that sounds like something that I can do. And so I was determined to follow in his footsteps, literally, and say, they told me I'm not going to walk, but I'm going to make myself walk and I'm going to get out of this bed and I'm going to walk out of here and I'll show everybody. And I figured that I'm going to start small. And I literally, I could see my big toe hanging out from underneath the bed sheet at the end of the bed. And I thought, let's work on that and see if I can make it move. I just want to wiggle it. And I would lay there at night and stare at that thing and wish and hope and pray and 
try and think and just everything that I could to make that toe move, and it wouldn't work. And eventually, I had to come to the point where I'm not going to be able to walk out of rehab. I am not going to be able to walk. And it was a difficult experience for me to decide and to understand, well, what is it? Is it a lack of faith on my part? Is it a lack of effort? Is it, Am I not trying hard enough? What am I doing that is making it so that it didn't work? And uh, eventually I had to come to the understanding that, you know what? It's not a lack of faith. It's not a lack of effort. It's a lack of nerve connection. When I broke my neck, the nerves that go from my brain down to my legs are no longer connected, and faith and hope and effort aren't going to be able to connect them. So I have to live where I am and accomplish what I can. And just because I can't walk doesn't mean that I don't have certain strengths and abilities, and it doesn't mean that I'm any less of a person. Um, it just means that I have my own unique circumstances and my own unique abilities that I need to uh, utilize to engage life. Hey, Neil. I, uh... I, I'm, I'm back, sorry. Uh, That's all right. Really, uh, but it, it's an amazing story. And when I listen to you talk about just how you took each day and try to improve every time, I think people are suffering from serious illness, poor paralysis, always have to have hope. And you are a wonderful oh book. You talked yeah. about the story of the book Mom. with the football player oh, and with other people. Oh, when you talk to those people and they have oh, it just must be so difficult oh, for them to see the next day, oh, let alone what's happened to them because they're so shocked. Oh, by it. You know, it's, if you're a loved one, if you don't go into these types of situations, you have a loved one, how do you talk to them? I think it's such a difficult thing because sometimes there seems like there's no hope. Yeah. This is one of those things where I, I have people that will come to me and say, hey, you need to go talk to my, you know, fill in the blank, my friend, my brother, my whatever. They're, they're going through something like what you went through, and they're depressed, and they're angry, and they're this and that. And um, you need to go and – um, make them happy and get them on your same wavelength. And I'd say I really can't do that because I can't learn lessons for other people. And everyone needs to go through the process themselves. If I can, for lack of a better term, grease the rails a little bit and let you know that, yeah, there is a light at the end of the tunnel and the light at the end of the tunnel is not an oncoming train. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there is hope there. And yes, life is going to be different as a result of whatever the circumstances are, whether they are internal or external. Life is hard. It's just part of being alive. But the fact is that we are alive, and that is the, the truly important thing about life. As long as we are breathing, as long as we are... Uh, on top of the grass instead of six feet under it, we have the ability to live and breathe and enjoy the gift that is given to us every day that is called life. You know, Rob, you you are incredible, and I mean I mean that sincerely. As I sit here and listen to you, when we put the information up on you this morning on our show page, I, I think I said something like, and I don't know the exact wording, uh, something like, you, you know, we have problems, what we call problems, and, and a lot of our problems don't amount to the proverbial hill of beans. And, you know, we, we, uh, we moan and we groan, you know, we, we don't have this and we don't have that and we wasn't treated fair and this didn't happen. In plain words, we do a whole lot of whining because we think those trivial things are problems. And when I was reading about you, and now that I'm listening to you, shame on Espenlob. I mean, I'm old enough to know better. Shame on Espenlov for griping and groaning and whining. Uh, a lot of times my wife will say, you want some cheese with that wine? 
<laughs> just over trivial things. And, and you're so right. We just get caught up in just plain everyday living that we don't take the time to look around and realize this, this, and excuse my language, but this ain't nothing. You right. are, you are an incredible human being, my man. Well, let me just tell you, George, don't be too hard on yourself. And uh, part of the fact is that we all get caught up in that. I'm going to tell you two quick stories. The first of which is I gave a presentation one time and Afterwards, this gentleman came up to me and he says, I want to thank you so much for your presentation. It is fantastic. And listen, before your presentation, I thought I had problems. But then I listened to you and like you, you have real problems. And I'm just thinking, no, that's not what I'm, I'm talking about. The fact is everybody's got problems and um, your problems are unique to you. And I'm thankful that I'm not called to carry your burdens and you're not called to carry mine. But we all have our own unique difficulties. And this is one of the analogies that I think is very powerful for me. In, op in the world of life, the optimist and the pessimist look at the glass and one says it's half full and one says it's half empty. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the human condition, when it comes to our life, nobody really has a glass that's half full or half empty. You know some people and they and it's 90% full. And you know other people, and they got a glass, and there's not a whole lot in it. The question becomes, where is your straw? Because some of those 90% people, they just put their straw in the top, and when they suck on the straw, all they're getting out is air because they're so miserable about what they don't have, and they're so upset about what somebody else has, that, and they're just unhappy about what is missing in their life. And they don't take time to appreciate what they have. And what they've got is, you know, so much to be uh, valued, but they miss out on it. And there's other people, and you know them, and they've got just a little bit. And they're, they don't have a whole lot in their glass, but they've got their straw jammed all the way down to the bottom. And when they draw on that straw, they're getting all of the enjoyment and nutrition and happiness that they can out of what they've got and they're appreciating it that way so it's really about all of us as a challenge are we miserable about what we don't have or are we getting the joy out of what we do have because that's the only thing that we can do in life mm. that was unbelievable, uh, what you talked about because I think that's the key people are depressed and upset and sad not happy with their lives because they want to have what others have. Instead of being happy with what you have, because things like life gets away and life becomes problems, and then it leads to why, why me, why is this happening to me? And what do you think is the thing that keeps you going every day? What is that one thing that makes you look at what things that you're happy about in your life? Tell us how, how you do that. Uh, there are two things that keep me going in life. The one is that I have uh, a strong faith background. And in that, I've come to understand that my faith has promised me not that um, God will fix all my problems for me, but I have the comfort of knowing that God will go through all my problems with me. So I'm never alone in that. And my faith is very strong uh, that way. The second of which is uh, my wife, <laughs> who is a, a fantastic individual. And just to close a loop here, to go back, my girl, the girlfriend that I was talking about previously that gave me the understanding that it's who you are on the inside and that she loved me for who I am on the inside. Of course, I married her because if you do find somebody that loves you that way, you don't ever let them go. So she's my wife. And she does remind me how fortunate I am to be married to her occasionally. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a matter of taking a look around and every day having the focus to say, what is it that I'm going to look at? Am I going to look at what I have or am I going to uh, look at what I don't have? And keeping that perspective and appreciating it. 
I'll share this with you as well. And Neil and George, I don't know if this went into the bio, but when my wife and I had been married for six or seven years and started to talk about having kids, and I was a little bit concerned because I'm thinking, what kind of dad am I going to be? I can't build a treehouse. I can't throw a football. I can't do any of those what I would classify as red-blooded American dad things. And my wife and I talked about it, and we prayed about it and thought about it, and eventually one day she said to me, what is it that a dad really does? A dad loves his kids no matter what. A dad teaches his kids right and wrong. And a dad is there for his kids when they need him. And I said, I can do all those things. And said, Great, let's have kids. Well, <laughs> we went through all kinds of issues. And finally, with the help of modern medicine, we got the first pregnancy test back that announced we are expecting. And I was so happy about it. And she went for her first sonogram. And they said, hey, guess what? There's two of them. And she went for her next sonogram. And they said, uh, I think there's three of them. And I said, all right, stop with the sonograms already. They're multiplying in there. But, um, all that to tell you that I am the proud father of 11-year-old triplets. And for us, it's like we are so thankful to have kids that I'm not, the fact that there's three of them is just we got them all in one shot. <laughs> other people hear that and they're like triplets oh my goodness lord bless you kind of thing you know and for me it's like hey we believe that he did and we'll take them but it's all about perspective and to some they would look at that as it being overwhelming and to us it is uh it's a matter of being thankful for the fact that we have kids at all and uh, we were brought to that point that we could appreciate the gift that's been given to us even though we got three times what we were expecting Neil, you have four, right? Yes, I have four. So, Rob, Rob, you I got have your four, four, two, and uh, ten months. We're driving down the road right now. Uh, <laughs> craziness. I figured it out after coming to push it to put it in mute so that you guys don't hear everything and ask questions. So, Rob, I hope I was going to ask some interesting questions. But I'm going to have to say do. Pretty soon, we get an unbelievable story, man. And I want to get a little quick plug for myself. Uh, everyone needs to check out TotalTutor.net. For more information on the OA and TotalTutor, Total Education Network, again, 100 plus stations. We have celebrities, entrepreneurs, often, everyone in between. I got to have you on my show and talk about things. We need to have a cup of coffee someday uh, and connect in Pittsburgh sometime to have a conversation. You're a great guy. I really, George, thank you for connecting me. And uh, also, we are the challenge.com if you want to join the 90 day challenge. All right, George, thanks for uh, having me on. I look forward to being back next month. All right, man? All right, buddy. Take care. Thanks, Neil. Thanks for chatting with you. Okay. Okay. You know, Rob, when you're just talking about the kids, we 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 raised four. Uh, of course, I I tell them all now. Our our oldest will be uh, forty four in just a few days. Okay. And our youngest is uh, thirty. Man, I I you know after all this time, you would think you'd know, but our youngest is uh, thirty five, thirty six, something like something yeah. like that. But we got them from forty four. Uh, in between down to uh, 36 or 37. But it took us four times, you know. Uh, sure. Mom had to go to the hospital four times. And you guys just did it all in one swoop. I think that's pretty cool. It is. And I, I have to tell you, my kids actually benefit from my uh, disability because of my limitations physically. Um, there's a lot of things that I can't do but I'm able to work with them and accomplish those kind of things. And whether it's doing arts and crafts in the house where I'm not able to actually do the things, but by giving them instruction, I'm able to help them accomplish that kind of stuff. Or my one daughter at 11 is a fantastic baker. And she is, she's been baking 
since she was, I don't know, probably seven or eight years old. And now at 11 years old, she's baking cupcakes from scratch and making buttercream frosting from scratch. And it's, it's just pretty incredible to watch. And at the same time, it's a cool opportunity. I'm not doing it. I'm there with her in the kitchen while she is. Mm-hmm. And it's a great time for me and her to be together as a dad and a daughter. It's a great time for her to accomplish some pretty incredible things. And she's able to share that with others. And she, you know, she's able to feel as though she's accomplishing things because she is. Um, but that comes as a result of taking the injury, understanding it for what it is, but also understanding how important it is to spend time as a dad with my kids, because that's, that's really going to be what ultimately impacts their lives is the amount of quality time that I spend with them. Can I go back to those emotions just, just one more time for a little bit? Sure. There was no sequence to your emotions. And I, and I mean, like, uh, you didn't go from being thankful and grateful that you were alive to uh, the next emotion and then move to the next emotions. I mean, it was probably like a roller coaster, right? I mean, you went one emotion and then maybe one day or one moment in a day, you fell back to another emotion and it just, is that the way it really was? Yeah, and in some ways it was kind of like you had waves of emotions Mm -hmm. in some ways where one day I was just thankful to be alive and the next day or the next minute even it was a matter of being frustrated that it's really hard to accomplish what it is that I'm trying to work on in therapy and that 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 was very difficult and then it was okay I may be frustrated with this but I am still alive and, and you're right back to that thankfulness and then you would go through different experiences and uh, but most most often it was coming back to that understanding that I am alive and that life is a gift. And when you see the, how fragile the thread is that uh, holds on to life, you begin to understand and appreciate it a little bit more. Perhaps if we could, uh, I don't know, have it... <laughs> have it stamped on the inside of our forehead that maybe we could look up and see that life is but a vapor, perhaps, just perhaps, that we would we would understand and we would we wouldn't take life for granted. You know, there are there are two things about what you've said that are so important. The first of which is we almost have this kind of experience like, of course, what's going to happen is uh, I live today, I go to bed, I wake up and I live tomorrow, and then I go to bed and I wake up and I do the same thing over and over, almost ad infinitum, you know? Mm -hmm. And the understanding that uh, none of us is going to be able to do this forever. What we have is something, it's it's a limited time experience, and we... None of it can be wasted, or none of it should be wasted, if that makes sense. Um, And the other piece of it is that every day, every hour, every second that we're given is an opportunity to engage life. And I use the analogy that life is kind of like a river, and it flows. And there's some people, and they're willing to sit beside the, the river and just watch it flow by and watch the people and watch what happens and there's others and they're willing to get in a little bit. So they'll wade in and get their feet wet, maybe get in up to their knees. And I want to be the guy that has my little kayak or boat or whatever it is that I'm in. And I want to be out there in the middle of the river, fully engaged in life and experiencing everything that it has to offer. And that's going to mean that some days I'm going through the rapids and some days my little boat is going to flip over and I'm going to have to struggle to get it back upright and, and to keep going down the river. But the only way to be thoroughly, to get all that life has to offer is to get out there in the middle and to experience it every day. And to, to say, for me, it's very important to say this way, George, 
I may not engage life the way that I used to, but I am still engaged in life, and I still am alive, and I've got to live every day as fully as I can. Mm, that's tremendous. Uh, we we have a lot of folks that do sit on on the side on the side or on the banks of the river, watching everyone else, uh, and and I found there's a lot of people that will watch watch the guys and girls that get out there in the middle, <clears throat> and yeah they they might tip over they struggle to get back up, and they can sit on the bank and and tell them what they did wrong and why they tipped over, but yet they won't go out there themselves. That's it. Um, and there's a variety of folks, and some of the folks that are sitting on the bank are saying, boy, that looks exhilarating. Uh, I wonder why I don't get that experience. I, that looks really cool. Why isn't, why isn't that happening to me? <laughs> and the fact is that uh, as long as we sit on the sideline, we're safe. Our boat's not going to flip over. We're going to be okay. But we're not truly engaged, and we're not getting everything that life has to offer. You know, Rob, I, I often sit and wonder, and <clears throat> my wife will tell you that, uh, of course, she tells me a lot of things. So, you know, we, we've been hooked up, married for 45 years, so she's told me a whole lot about myself. But I often wonder, and she tells me I, I wandered off one day and never did come back. But nonetheless, I often wonder how much, I mean, what what could it possibly be like if more people would f find their passion and strive and reach their potential, this this would and this would be an awesome world. You know, it's interesting to me. The problem that we have is that so many people are. Uh, focused on themselves and it's about me it's about what i want it's about all about uh, you know making a better situation for myself and really what makes this world a better place is when we lose the focus on me and we start to put the focus on others mm -hmm. and for me it's very important to understand that Yes, I do have limitations. I've got substantial limitations. And yet, at the same time, there are things that I can do that will help other people. I know of enough about computers to scare myself sometimes. <laughs> but with that being said, in our family, if there's a computer problem, somebody they're going to come to me, and I'm helping out the extended family, my sister-in-law and my father-in-law and all of them, when they've got computer problems, they're coming to me because I've got that ability. Well, I don't know what your ability is, and I don't know in your audience, I don't know what their strength is, mm -hmm. but if they're feeling alone, if they're feeling useless, it's a matter of find out what it is that you can do and do it for somebody else. It was really interesting. Uh, two or three weeks ago, I was off doing a visit for work, and I was interviewing a woman that had some mental health issues. And we were talking about what she does and what she likes to do, and she was telling me that she likes to eat, and mostly she likes to eat junk food. Or one of her favorite things is brownies, especially the brownies that her neighbor bakes. And I couldn't help myself. I asked her, well, why does your neighbor bake you brownies? She says, because I walk her dog. I said, well, why do you walk her dog? She says, well, the dog, it's a young dog, and my neighbor's old, and if she walks the dog, the dog pulls her over. And so I walk the dog for her, and because she appreciates what I'm doing, she makes brownies for me. And this is one of those things where you start to see walking somebody else's dog. It's not a real big deal, but now this woman appreciates it mm -hmm. and is – you're starting to form a relationship there because it's I'm doing something for others and they value me for that and they're doing something for me and um, it becomes a cycle of appreciation and it becomes a foundation for a relationship where it's not just me feeling sorry for myself about what I can't do, but it's me taking what I can do and uh, making 
building it into the foundation for a relationship with others that's not based on them always having to give to me, but me being able to provide for them too. There are so many, so many people, and I, I guess if I had a dollar for everyone that I heard say the things like, I can't, or uh, it's impossible, or I'm not good enough. All those, all those negative vibes that that, that kind of surrounds them, and, and it got inside them, and and now they're just like uh, they're almost. Uh, please excuse the term. They're almost paralyzed from the negativity. What do you tell people that say I I can't possibly go do that? Or I want to do this, but I can't possibly do that because of such and such and so and so. There's a very simple quote that I enjoy. And the quote is, whether you think that you can or you think that you can't, you're right. That's and good. I like that. Yeah. For, for those people that believe that they can't, they're absolutely correct. And as long as they believe that they can't, they won't. But... If they're willing to say, uh, I, I'm interested in doing this. And this is one of those things that it may not come easy. Well, do you remember the story about Michael Jordan when he went out for his high school basketball team? Yes. As a sophomore, he went out and he got cut mm -hmm. by the coach. And he went home and he cried. <laughs> and the question is, how are you going to take, how is he going to take that? And so as a result of that, he went and he practiced and he determined, I'm going to be, I'm going to make the team the next year. And he did. And obviously he's gone on to be uh, debatably the best basketball player, at least of our time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he could have taken what the coach said as a sophomore and said, you're not good enough and said, I guess I'm not good enough. I quit. And he would have been done and we would have all missed out on the greatness of uh, MJ, but because he took that as a challenge rather than as a defeat, he overcame that and um, was able to accomplish great things. And that's ultimately what it's about. Um, so there are two things that we need to look at when we're looking at things that we can't do. The question is, is it something that um, we're not good at and that we could accomplish if we were able or if we put in the effort to work at it and to get better at it or is it something that we legitimately can't do then if we can't do it let it go and find out what is it that I can do and take the things that we can do and work with those so for me to use the story from before if I spent all my time to this day working on walking and wiggling that big toe I would be miserable because I can't do it. Mm -hmm. But it's like, okay, I can't. But I have a wheelchair that I use, and I can get out, and I can go everywhere I want to. I was actually uh, talking to my mom today, and, and she was, we were talking about a variety of different things, and uh, she needed the odometer reading. I have a van that I drive, which is a little bit scary, George. I'm driving with just my hands, not using my feet. But I got this van. It's new. It's a year old, and I've got 22,000 miles on it since the end of June last year. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sitting around waiting for stuff to happen. I'm out there <laughs> going, but it's a matter of utilizing the things that we can do, utilizing the strengths that we have, and making the most of them. So the two options are if we're paralyzed by what we can't do, you can work on it until you can do it, or... If it's not going to happen that way, then find out what is it that you can do and do that with all your heart. When uh, that, that, that's pretty amazing. I, I was sitting here just talking about, about driving in your van. You know, you, you, you could be the fellow that said, well, I'll just depend on everyone else. Or as you were saying earlier, I'll just sit here. I'll just sit here on the bank until the boat comes over and picks me up, takes me where I'm going, and then brings me back and sets me down. But no, that's not that's not enough for Rob Oliver. He's going to drive the van, 
he going to get, like you said earlier, you're going to get in the boat and you're going out in the middle of the water. I, I, I find that fascinating. And oh my. Now, if you, realizing your limitations, can still do what I do, drive, that ought to tell a whole lot of folks that you can really do what you've just been saying if you set your mind to it. Yeah, this is one of those things, George. Again, let me, let me just lay out that lesson that my occupational therapist gave me. You may, I may not do it like I used to do it. I may not do it like everybody else does it. It may take a lot of effort, but you're able to accomplish your goals if you're, if you're willing to put your mind to it. And now keep this in mind, George. For example, uh, we were talking about Michael Jordan. Well, if I wanted to be a basketball player, there's a couple options, all right? Number one, I am never going to play in the NBA. I, I just can't. I can't dribble the ball. I can't shoot a ball. I can't run up and down the court. I, I just can't do that. Well, if my interest is being involved in sports, there is a sport called quad rugby, which is basically rugby played in wheelchairs. Ooh, that would be and rough. And if I wanted to be, if my goal, <laughs> my interest in basketball was to be involved in sports, there is sports that I can be involved in. If my interest was specifically basketball, then I am able to, even though I can't play, I would be able to coach. I would be able to be involved in any number of ways in youth basketball or anything like that. Uh, or, you know, for that matter, if I wanted to, I could get a job in a, a supportive role so involved with, you know, the NCAA or with the NBA itself or whatever the situation is, wherever my, whatever my level of interest is, I can pursue those goals. And it may not be exactly what I intended. I'm, I, I'm not going to make the NBA as a player. But it may be that I can still be involved in sports in general. I can be involved specifically in the sport of basketball or whatever it is, as long as I'm willing to be creative in how I allow myself to get engaged. You drive. You have a full-time job. Correct. You're, you're a motivational speaker, and <laughs> I can see why you're so motivational uh, and inspirational and all those other things that end in AL. Uh, but... You have a family, you have a loving wife, you are, uh, and I don't, I don't like to use the word normal because I looked that up one day and that means, normal means a set standard and I often wondered who set the standard, how do we know he was right or she was right, but nonetheless, you live a full, robust life, don't you? Absolutely. And this is really what was important in my learning experience. When I was in rehab almost 20 years ago, they told me that we were looking at a cure for spinal cord injury in the next three to five years. Well, nowadays, with all of the work that Christopher Reeve has done and all the effort that's been put in, I hear that we are looking at a cure for spinal cord injury in the next two to four years. So I figure in the last 20 years, we've made a whole year of progress. Mm, <laughs> I see what you're saying. Cure for spinal cord injury. But some of the guys that I was there with took that to heart and said, great, listen, you're going to be able to fix me. So I'm going to go home. And they went home and sat in front of the TV and said, call me up when you come up with a cure for spinal cord injury and fix me and I will go back to my life. So they put their lives on hold. Mm -hmm. They hit the pause button on life. And then they went from uh, and just waited. Well, life didn't wait. Life didn't stop. It kept going. And they've missed out on so much waiting for that cure to come and quote unquote fix them. For me, it's a matter of listen. 
I'll be delighted when you come up with a cure for spinal cord injury. And when you do that, sign me up and I'll be glad to have that. But in the meantime, I don't need to be quote unquote fixed. I have a full life. You tell me what my life's missing, George. I, I've got that beautiful wife. I've got three beautiful kids. I'm working. I've got friends. I'm involved in church. I, my life is full of blessings from top to bottom, and I'm not missing out on anything. And I don't need to get out of this wheelchair to improve my life. My life is pretty wonderful where it is. I was thinking when you was talking, uh, when, when, when you can fix me, call me up and I'll I'll drive over, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, You're, and, go ahead, Rob. Yeah, it's, it's a matter of um, I don't, not viewing myself as broken, not allowing myself to be seen as broken. I may have limitations, but I am still uh, a whole person. Your faith, <clears throat> your, your, and before you mention how your faith was so important to you uh just listening to you talk i was sitting here thinking down deep inside there's some real deep roots that are rooted in god i could just Absolutely. i could just tell by the sound of your voice and i could hear the beat of your heart and then when you mentioned it, you take that, and when you said that God would be with you in every situation, that that is powerful medicine in itself. And I've heard the skeptics, and I've heard the agnostics, and I heard those that mock and uh, say derogatory things such as, well, if you're such a, a, a good Christian and you believe in God, why are you like that and, and all the other negative things? But you hit the nail right on top of the head when you said God never promised that we wouldn't go through these things, but he did promise he'd be with us always. And you take that, that in itself where it is down deep inside, I mean it down in the marrow of a man or a woman's soul, and that in itself is powerful medicine, isn't it? It is. The understanding of faith kind of puts life into order, and it allows you to understand. It's interesting that you say it, because I have now come to a point where I no longer refer to what happened to me as an accident. I refer to it as an injury mm -hmm. because I, there aren't any accidents. We all go through our experiences. We have what happens to us, and um, it's, it's not there to defeat us. It's not there to overwhelm us. It's there uh, to give us an experience, and we have one of two choices. We can either um, fall down and be overwhelmed, or we can learn that it's time for us to lean not on ourselves, but to lean on the one who is with us and the one who gives us strength. That's incredible. I have mentioned this several times on our show and several times in, in writing different things, but I've, I've told people that on this show, and we're just plain, ordinary folks, but on this show, we laugh, we cry, we go through all those emotions. And when we laugh, we laugh robustly. And when we cry, we're not ashamed to say that we cried. And we're not ashamed to say that the tears are flowing uh, because we get so caught up in what our guests are saying and what they represent. And tonight... You made me laugh, and yes, there were some tears that flowed down my face. And Rob, I, I want to say this. You have inspired me. And your wife, 
your wife and your kids, they 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 are blessed, and I mean that they are blessed to have a husband and to have a dad like you. Well, I I appreciate that, and I'll take it from the other direction, and that is I am very uh, thankful, and I am very blessed to have a wonderful wife and, and three beautiful kids. And I'll tell you, my wife is one of the folks that, uh, one of the main driving forces behind where I am. And she does not allow me to pity myself and doesn't allow me to sit around and, and mope. I, I give her a lot of credit. Let me just, I'll, I'll tell you this. When I got married, I was still in college. She had recently graduated and was working. And she said, like, hey, here's what the deal is. I'm going to support you until you are done with your education. And then you're going to go and you're going to support me. And so her expectation was that I'm going to carry my weight as much as I can in our marriage. And that really is the understanding and the expectation where marriage, my dad taught me a long time ago, some people will tell you that marriage is a 50-50 thing, and it's not. It's a 100-100 thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, her expectation is that I give 100% as much as she gives 100%. And she doesn't allow me any uh, any wiggle room as far as getting out of stuff. <laughs> but I, she expects me to give 100% of what I'm able to do. And that understanding and that um format or that you know that paradigm really helps me to keep in mind the fact that I do have abilities and that I have got something to offer and uh, I do that as much and as I can and with all my heart to be a good husband and to uh, to be a very proud dad let's give the people your website address and where they can get your book sure um, the website is your motivational speaker.com and I do have a free download on there I've got 60 quotes about dealing with adversity for uh, anybody that's interested in having that in having that it's a free download uh, give me your email address and you can have that I'd be delighted to share it with you. And then uh, the book is still walking, and that is available on my website. It is also available on Amazon if, you're, if you want to look for it there. And uh, my second book is called Still Falling, and anybody who's interested in that, I, it is not available yet, but send me an email, and I'll be delighted to let you know when that book comes out and when you're able to order that. And you can send, you can email me right from the website, yourmotivationalspeaker.com. Do you expect the, the, the new book to be out soon? I expect the new book to be out probably late summer. Great. So look in uh, sometime in August. Are you staying busy with your motivational engagements? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing uh, a fair bit with that. I've, uh, it's one of those things that I can. I, I talked earlier about doing something to pay the bills, mm -hmm. and so the full time job that I have is what pays the bills, and the speaking is kind of what I'm passionate about because I think it's really important to get out there and to remind all of us that we we can do amazing things if we're willing to put our minds to it and willing to put in the effort to it. So uh, I'm able to take that to various audiences. I, I was, have recently spoken at some high schools, middle schools. I've got a college, a couple colleges that I'm going to go uh, speak at. I've got uh, every, everything from associations to uh, human resource groups to local businesses that I'm able to go and speak to. And that's really fulfilling and really exciting. And it's an opportunity that I really cherish. And I love when people get in touch with me and say, hey, uh, is it possible for you to come and talk to our group? And I'd be delighted to work with anybody uh, to come visit them and share that message that 
uh, that there's so much that we can do. And if people would want you to come, can they get the information to contact you off of your website? Yeah, there's a contact form on the website. Uh, let me know about your uh, or let me know about your group, and I'll see what we can work out. It, very definitely interested in doing that. I'd love to talk to any of your listeners that are interested in that. Great, your motivational speaker dot com, Rob. I thank you from the depths of my heart for taking the time to come on the show tonight. And <clears throat> I don't know if Neil's still listening or, or, or not. I know he's not on the phone, but <clears throat> nonetheless, I, I thank Mr. Neil Haley. You know, he, he used to be a professional wrestler there in Pittsburgh. Uh, the man's almost seven foot tall. Uh, wow. But he, he is one tremendous individual. And this guy, he's, he's got more energy then you can shake a stick at because he's into everything, doing everything, going everywhere, uh, <laughs> and he he's just he's just a he's just a bundle of fire. That that that's what he is. And then with his with his four kids, I I thought that was pretty neat. That was most unique. Neil going down the long lonesome highway with the four kids and the missus and communicating with us at the same time, and I, I appreciate that. And I like the background type of stuff that was going on. You know what I mean? I talk about that at church and talk about that's the sound of the future. Mm -hmm. That's the sound of the next generation, and hearing that background noise is something that says, hey, we got a lot of hope for the future because we got some great kids around us. Uh-huh. Yes, indeedy. Rob, will you give your wife and your children... My regards and my many thanks. Absolutely. And look, I, we, we've got to stay in touch. You bet. And the next time I get up close to there, I'll, I'll try to shoot you a, a, an email or I'll give you a call or whatever. And maybe just by chance, we could hook up and, and meet eyeball to eyeball. That'd be a great thing, George. I appreciate it. And uh, hey, I'll... I'll get back in touch with you uh, when the new book comes out. All righty. Thank you very, very much, Rob, and I'm sure you're going to hear from, from Neil very soon. Yep. I appreciate it, George. I really appreciate the opportunity to be on with you, and I hope that your audience has enjoyed this as much as I have. Oh, they will, and a lot of people listen. Uh, you know, they, they keep coming because it's archived. They keep coming and coming and coming and coming, and uh, so it's just going to keep going on and on and on and on and on. You are a wonderful individual. God bless you. Uh, thank you very much, and the same to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And there, ladies and gentlemen, wow. A man who's living life with limitations, and I mean he is living life to the fullest. Mm. I, 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 I. Let's loosen up here for a minute. Get ourselves together. Everybody stand on their head. I mean, yeah, stand on your head and clap your feet. That'll work. Stand on your head, clap your feet, kick the chair back or whatever you might be sitting on, inside or outside. Whatever you're doing, just stop doing it. If you're listening to this radio show on one of your listening devices, and remember, whether it be the laptop or a desktop, if you've got Apple products, you can download the Apple or the Spreaker app off of Apple and you can listen to it on your iPad, your iPad or your iPod Touch, your iPhones and so on and so forth. If you have a Droid system, you can go to your marketplace and download the Spreaker app so you can listen to it on those devices. Uh, I mean, you, you can just listen to us 16 ways from last Sunday. And it's getting gooder and gooder and gooder and gooder. You could even take your phone or your 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 uh, tablet or whatever device you have, you know, and plug it into your power source in your car and play it through your speakers. And some people have told me that a lot of the new vehicles have internet access that you can listen to internet radio, and so you can tune us in there. I mean, it's just amazing. This technology has brought us so far. And it is. It is indeed a blessing. 
and we are excited we're able to bring this show to you each and every night, Monday through Friday. So tune in. And if you know someone that missed the live show tonight, tell them to go back into the archive. They can listen to it all over again. And it's free download. You can download it. You can download one summer all, whatever you might want. So kick everything back, let your hair down, and take a big deep breath and let's have some fun. It's Friday. Mama, hey! It's Friday night here at the Funny Farm, and I thank you for tuning in. Wow. I was going to say something, but like always, why does this happen to me every single night? Just as I'm about ready to say something, I lose it. It's gone. All right. Think, Espenlob. Sit here and think. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends, Romans and countrymen. Excuse me just for a second to see if I can get the light back on and bring back my thought. No. It's not working. Anyhow, it's Friday. It's Friday, and we want you to have a good time. My many, many thanks to Rob Oliver for being on the show tonight. Rob Oliver out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And thanks to my friend Neil Haley, who co-hosted with me tonight. And he was going down the highway. I find this very, very interesting. I love it. I mean, I just love it. Going down the highway with his family and being on the show at the same time. And look. His family is a family. 
because the little ones was back there and and, and I think it was the little guy. I think he's the newest, the little guy. Uh, you know, he was expressing himself. And there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with those young people expressing themselves. And I think it's just so cool that Neil was talking to us and riding down the highway and with, with mom and the kids. And the kids were expressing themselves. And, and I, I just think that's wonderful. And I thank you so much, so much, Neil for doing that i i enjoyed it i just i just loved it i loved it we listen to the family unit in action that is so good all right here comes the caller we've been waiting for my mom how are you doing i'm doing fine how are you i'm fine here i am in the radio studio and there you are at home because of the rain and all the stuff, and uh, anyhow, you called in just like a good soldier would. Well, I have to do my part, I guess. That's right. Now, a lot of people don't know it. Many people do. I I think it's been uh, put up on Facebook by several different people, and now we're going to tell everyone that's going to listen to the show uh, not only live, but those that are going to listen to it later, that today was your last day of work, and as of now, you are officially retired, right? Yes, indeed. And I am loving life. You're, <laughs> you're loving life. Now, yes. you see, tomorrow is Saturday, and the next day is Sunday, so you're not going to really get to know how feels until like monday right exactly i'm, I'm looking for monday you're looking so for, i can figure that out <laughs> you just want to get that 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 feeling whatever that is yes. Yeah. so how was your day at, at at work it was wonderful did they do anything yeah, do yes, it? everybody was good to me they took me to lunch they gave me gifts i just had a great time they took you to lunch and they gave you gifts, uh, yes. hoping that this day would soon end so they could get rid of you, right? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but they will, they will miss me. Tell our listeners what kind of work you did. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm like, I was a receptionist, clerical, jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah. Didn't that pretty much sum it up? <laughs> I answered phones, I opened mail, I did reports, I I did billing, I did AP, I did AAR, I did intercompany billings, I uh, entered data in, in the computer. You wrote letters uh, for I, the boss. Huh? You wrote letters for the boss. I did write letters for the boss for a long time, wrote letters for the controller. I didn't write the letters. I typed the letters. You typed the letters. Okay. Yeah. Typed the letters for the boss for years. So he learned how to use a computer. <laughs> how many years did you work at that particular place? 19 years, seven months, one week. <laughs> 19 years, seven months, one week. One, yeah. 16 hours, 37 minutes, and 15 seconds. No, now you're adding too many hours. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. what do you plan on doing? Well, I plan on doing nothing for the next couple of weeks, just kind of adjust. Um, go and camping next weekend for some fun and games, and just run out and see how things work out. Does it scare you? Does it concern you? Does it? What kind of emotions you have? Um, excitement, a uh, little bit of apprehension, but I'm sure that's to be expected because this is something totally different for me. But hey, we're here now, so we're going to go with it. So now you can spend more time with me and take better care of me. 
I don't think that was a plan. I said I was retiring for me. This is about me. Oh. Okay. Now. <laughs> so er- I can take better care of me. Earlier today, we said that we were going to start walking in the morning. You know, that that's like two old people. That's what two old people does. Exactly. Yeah. But anyhow. We said we were going to start walking. Now, I am a very, very early riser, like middle of the night kind of riser. Mm-hmm. You, you are a very, very late. Middle of the day riser. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just wondering, how's this going to work out walking in the morning? The only thing I can think of right now is um, I'm just going to have to get up real close over my jammies, go do my walk, come back, take the back, climb back in bed. <laughs> I already got it figured out. Uh, well, yeah, you're going to have to try different different ways to see what really right. works for see you. See what really works for me. But the key, the, the key element is for you to get up early so <laughs> you can walk with me and we can walk together. Yeah. But then when I come home, I can lay down. By myself and be a happy camper. I don't know. After, after you do your exercise like that, you know, your blood. I might not want to. That's right. Your blood's pumping and, and, and you're ready to go. And, and uh, you, you'll see. I mean, the days that you worked, you were up early and off and gone. But now that you're retired, uh, you're, you're going to have to make some adjustments if you want to do this walking thing with me. I got this. Okay. All right. So you had a very fine day. They treated you well at work. Yes. They gave you all the accolades, and they slapped you on the back and patted your cheeks and gave you little kisses and hugs and said how much they loved you and sent you on your way, right? Exactly. <laughs> well, Mom, Mom, I'm happy for you. Well, I, I don't know... I'm happy for me today to see how next week tomorrow I'll be with my darling husband, my grandkids, and my friends, my son laws We'll see. You sure are starting to break up, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. Okay, I'm sorry. Hey, uh, I'll I'll be home soon. Uh, get some vittles. Well, we'll see what we can do when you get here. All right. Okay, love you. Love you. Bye. Bye bye. Well, today was my mom's last day, so she is officially done. This ought to be very interesting. I think we're going to go through a time of what's it called? Adjustment. That's what it is. Adjustment. Wow. We, we've got some exciting things coming down the road. Now, remember, tomorrow night, that Saturday night, right here on the Spreaker Network, Saturday night is when we air Unshackled. That is the ministry of Pacific Garden Mission out of Chicago, Illinois. And that, that show is the oldest running dramatized radio program in history. And as you hear me say so many times before, it's been running since 1950, and it's still running strong. And Pacific Garden Mission has been around since 1877, and we're delighted to be able to broadcast their program, Unshackled. Real people that has real-life situations that come out on the other side unshackled. And so join us tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time for an exciting episode of Unshackled. And then Sunday morning, we come right back at 7 a.m. Eastern Time, and we bring you another episode of Unshackled. So Saturday evening, 6.30, Sunday morning, 7 a.m. for the episodes of Unshackled. And next week we have an incredible lineup of guests again, and we are going to be 
on the road next week. We're going to be at a place called Tall Pines, and we are going to be broadcasting live from Tall Pines, Virginia. How about that? And we are going to have exciting times. We're going to have fun. We're going to laugh. And I really, I really can't tell you specifically because I don't know myself exactly what's going to happen. She cleans up fine Yeah, I don't know how she does it But she does it for me Thoughts off my mind The things I think about her They ought to be a crime She gets off on playing games But we're playing for keeps I'm going 90 miles an hour Around some dangerous curves Just getting out of control We could crash and burn But I got the feeling Forever's just in reach yeah. Her smile And I hope that you're tapping your feet, snapping your finger, bobbing your head, and shaking your booty, because it's Friday night, and we are live from the funny farm in a place called Our World. Email us, George C.E., that is George C.E. at Comcast.net, and we will be excited. I get excited, Charlie gets excited, my mom gets excited, everybody, the whole gang here at the Funny Farm, and trust me, we have a real gang here, they all get excited, oh goody, 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 we've got some email, and, and I need to, to remind myself, maybe, maybe in a few days when, when, when things uh, kind of ease on down a little bit, I can remember, or I can remind myself, if somebody around here, one of you guys around here would do that for me, remind me, we could print off some of these emails uh, that people's sending to us, and we could read some of them on the air. Uh, we, we have had tremendous, tremendous uh, content in those emails and such kind words and such support that we, we thank you so very, very, very much. But everyone here, everyone here gets excited when the email comes. We are planning some great things 
and we are going to have us a fun summer. Now, I don't know where you are, uh, and, and we have we have listeners in Brazil, we have listeners over in Italy and the UK, Ireland, and, and everywhere, and across the great nation, this great nation. Uh, I don't know where you're at, what the weather's like in your neck of woods, but let me tell you something. We have had a very wet spring, and what we thought was going to turn out to be a very warm, pleasant spring ended up, well, sometimes it was just downright soggy, damp, and chilly. Well, last week we had some really, really good weather up in the you know, high 80s, low 90s for three or four days. And then, lo and behold, we, we ended up with rain. When, when did it rain? It rained last Friday or day before yesterday. I don't know. But then, again, today, as we're getting the remnants of the tropical storm, uh, what is it, Andrea or whatever her name is, uh, we're under tornado warnings and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When I said all that to say this. We're going to have some pool parties where the whole gang, and let me tell you something, when they gather poolside around here and we go live, when that on-air sign lights up, that big red sign with the white letters, when it lights up, you are going to hear from some really, really first-class, top-notch, top-shelf, real loons right here on the Funny Farm. So we got pool parties scheduled and we're going to be on the road with our show and we're going to be interviewing uh people that are scheduled to be interviewed and we're going to interview people that really don't know they're going to be interviewed yet but they're going to be interviewed and oh we're just we're just going to have a blast and we want you we want you to tune in and just have a great time with us that last song was wrecking my world by Michael Callahan, and Michael will be with us on June the 20th. That's a Thursday night, June the 20th. He will be with us. Charlie and I was down there looking for some music this afternoon, looking for some new music, and we ran across this young lady. Her name is Hilda Lamas, and we've already contacted her and told her we're going to play some of her music tonight, and we were going to try to get her onto the show Uh and we're we're, we're going to reach out and continue to do that. Hopefully, we'll hear from her soon. But this girl, and, and I say this about a lot of people, guys and gals and groups, it makes no difference. She can just flat out sing. I guess that's my best way of describing folks when they can, when they can sing or play instruments. This gal can flat out sing. Can't take the mud out by Hilda Lamas. Get him on.
Mr. Hilda, Hacienda Records, what's up? It don't matter where I go People always talk pretending like they know my soul Trying to fill my mind with negativity It'll take more than that, you'll never have control of me published number. Are you feeling it? It's Friday night at the Funny Farm. I'm in complete control. That's what I tell myself. I got a mind of my own. I'll be all right alone. Don't need it. I see what I wanna see, or is it? 
That girl sings with an attitude. I like that. 302-497-3414 is the number if you want to call in and make comments and ask questions. <laughs> I just I just feel, oh, you know how I get. You know how I get. I mean, it's like Friday night. Good things are coming down the pike. Good things are here. There's been good things. Oh, everything's just been good, and it's getting gooder and gooder all the time 302-497-3414 or george.espenlaub e-s-p-e-n-l-a-u-b wow let me tell you one more time rob oliver go to his website if you didn't hear him tonight and you tuned in late go back and listen to the show again or if you know of someone else that didn't listen tell them tune in tune in because this man is an inspiration to many 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 and he has he has a tremendous family that stands behind him and i know they are fortunate to have him as husband and father go to his website yourmotivationalspeaker.com yourmotivationalspeaker.com and there you can order his book still walking still walking or you can go to amazon.com rob oliver out of pittsburgh pennsylvania thank you so very much rob for being on the show this evening mm. My, 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 my. We have had incredible guests one more time, one more week. I mean, they just kept on coming and coming and coming and coming, and we're not going to stop. This girl, Hilda Lamas, I mean, she can sing. She can sing. That last song, it had attitude, and I like that. And I like this. <laughs>
con solo un beso te enamoraré Te pregunté cuál es tu nombre, baby Como tú quieras te adoraré No te detengas con tu cariño Quiero que te muevas tú conmigo Qué guapo estás, baby Ven conmigo que te voy a enamorar Qué Su galanura me hizo ayer Me dijo, mira, ¿qué está pasando, baby? ¿Qué tú crees que me vas a hacer? Vete despacio, no hay tanta prisa Que este amor dudará toda la vida Me dice, mira, mira mi cielo It'll get your feet tapping, your fingers snapping, your head bobbing, and your booty shaking. And that's all that counts. That's all that counts. Hey, listen, I see the caboose coming. He's coming down around the corner up there. And Charlie and I is going to have to jump. Listen, from Charlie, from my mom, Travis, Dorothy, Ralph, I mean the whole gang here at the Funny Farm, it's been a delight. And we are so thankful that you have tuned in one more time and you hung out with us. Thank you one more time to Rob Oliver out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Go to yourmotivationalspeaker.com and get his book, Still Standing, and read and listen to what he had to say tonight. It's been a delight, and I trust I trust that you'll join me back here tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on Spreaker.com, when we bring you an exciting episode of Unshackled. To my friend Neil and to his family that is traveling down the long, lonesome highway, y'all stay safe, and I love you, and I'll talk to you soon. To all of our friends down the street, around the corner, Remember that to all of our friends down the street, around the corner, across this great nation, and around the world. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. We send you our love from the Funny Farm. Well, wherever you're at, if it's nighttime, 
You have a great night. And listen, if you're out partying tonight, don't you dare get behind that wheel if you've been drinking. You hear me now? Wherever you're at, if it's nighttime, have a great night. If it's daytime, have a great day. But regardless of where you are and what it is, y'all stay safe. Be kind one to another. Smile at one another. Don't take no wooden nickels. God bless you real good. Until tomorrow night, same time, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, same station right here, Spreaker.com. This is George Espinlob saying, good night, everybody.